36. And welcome everybody to Toot Sweet Social Club, brought to you by 55 Degrees. I'm Sean Quinn, I'm your host, and we've got some fun wines to go through tonight, and a very special guest. And if you look right in front of me, this is what we've got, Steve Reynolds Family Wines. And Steve Reynolds is with us. How's it going, buddy? Excellent. Thanks Great for having me in. Thanks for having me in. We have a crowd tonight. We have a crowd. We actually have a bunch of people here. It's actually more of a party than it is a wine tasting, I think, which... I hear that there's some sort of thing you like to do you know to start what, um, parties off. I do. You know, every time we do a wine dinner and I travel, I have a little surprise that I share with people. So you show up at a wine dinner expecting sort of the hoity-toity, white tablecloth thing, and this is what we do. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. What does he have? We reach for a little stimulation. It's tequila. <laughs> so if you didn't know this by now, you will learn this tonight. Tequila is the only stimulant of an alcohol. I did know that. Yeah. And uh, most of us have had one of those experiences along the way, I'm sure. Really? What was your I call experience? It, you know, I call it, you know, you, you get on the bus, it's doing five miles an hour. By the time you get off, it's doing 90. And most of us have hit rather hard at that point. But uh, actually, really what this is, it makes me look probably like an alcoholic. But the truth is, um, I like to honor the guys that truly put the wines on the table. So every time I go out, I sort of one dinner at a time, one hangover at a time. You know, I try to let everybody know. If it weren't for these great guys from Mexico, um, these wines wouldn't exist. And, you know, I, you know, we get to have this, you know, great honor and, and the credit of traveling around and going to these fantastic places. They never get to see that. So uh, I like to raise a glass to them. And uh, re literally, you know, behind all of us, there are great people that allow us to do these wonderful things that we get to do every day. So this is to honor them. And so for all my guys um, that work with me in the fields, work with me at the winery, this is in their honor. Cheers. Cheers. Thanks, Steve. Cheers. There we go. Always start, good right. to start off an uh, interview with some tequila. There we go. Put that right there. Now we can get serious about wine. Sure we can. And we got three very serious wines in front of us. Um, very serious. They're very strong ones. None. We've got three wonderful wines, all of yours, um, but we've got the most important one right in front of us to start off with. Um, this is your namesake wine. Tell me a little bit about it real yeah, quick. Yeah, this is our Reserve Cabernet. So this is our Stag's Leap District Reserve Cab. This is actually the first wine that we ever made um, before our vineyards actually came into fruition where we are on our property. We actually purchased fruit from the Stag's Leap District. And, um, you know, we got started. We were small. No one had ever heard of us. We were making wines in the garage. And a lot of people know my story. But, you know, I was a dentist. And for <laughs> several years... Um, I was trying to practice dentistry, learning about growing grapes, uh, starting this whole other career. And it started in the garage, just like, you know, all these wonderful jobs you hear about. So we thought, if you've never heard of Reynolds, why would you ever walk into a wine shop and walk over and pick up one of our bottles? So my wife and I, one night, we decided, well, what if we actually picked real flowers? What if we actually walked in our vineyard and um, picked real mustard flowers? Because Napa is known for its mustard festival. Oh, it's and absolutely it, beautiful every So year. there are no two alike. In fact, let me reach over here and see if we can get this on camera. So you can actually see every time you buy one of these bottles, you truly do have a unique product. So just kind of neat. Um, you know, we, we print the mustard flower now on our other labels, but uh, we stay true on our reserve because this was, again, the first bottle of wine. And uh, so that's kind of the story of where our logo, our identity came from, was from the mustard. That's pretty fantastic. And so come January or end of December, you and your wife are going to be out there going through and picking every single one of these flowers. You know, I just got back from Disneyland and I went on this ride called Pinocchio with my 10-year-old. And I don't want my nose to start growing. The truth of the matter is I probably um, don't pick as many flowers as I used to. We do still as a family go out and pick some flowers, but we don't pick all of them. Well, how many, so, how many labels do these have to go on? Um, we only make about 700 cases of this wine. Okay. So it's our, uh, our, one of our smallest production wines. And okay. we're trying to grow sorry, very true to our size. And um, this vineyard is very unique. We're lucky enough to have a vineyard that used to go into the Schaefer Hillside Select Program up until Pretty about nine program, years huh? ago. It's called the Annapurna Vineyard. And uh, the vineyard is split into Merlot and Cabernet. And um, so we make two wines from that property. Very cool. Very cool. Give it a try. Yeah, I really want to try sure. this. Thank you. I'm really happy to have you here. Really sharing some great wines. It's always great to have winemakers, people who 
not only produce the wines, but grow the grapes and know the whole story. And I want to know how a dentist gets from climbing in my mouth and looking at my teeth to actually making my teeth purple. So originally your job was to make my teeth white. Now your job is to make my teeth purple. Well, you know, uh, let's put it this way. People are a lot happier to see you walk in with a bottle of wine than a needle and a shaky hand, right? Shaky hand works all day long with a bottle of wine, but not with a needle in your hand. So, um, you know, it's, it's a great job. I, I always liked, I wanted to be outdoors. I, you know, I learned a lot about wines from my father. We lived in Europe growing up and, uh, I was the only boy in the family. So, uh, you know, over there, obviously, you start drinking at a much younger age. And uh, how young? Uh, Come on. Okay, probably about twelve. I was probably starting to tilt the glass a little bit with my dad. And uh, I know it sounds crazy over here, but uh, over there, it's 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 not crazy at not all. Not crazy at all. No. It really isn't. You know, I can remember, um, you know, fourteen, fifteen years old. You, you were at the pub a little bit. I'm not talking crazy drinking because drinking is different over there. It's respected. It is. It, it really is. So. Well, I think when you start drinking at such a younger age, you're not like all of a sudden. For me, if we're going to start talking about how young you were when you were drinking, you know, I had it set up in my family where it was very taboo. So all of a sudden I got to college and it was like, wait, I get to start drinking now. <laughs> yeah. So I completely understand where you're coming from. So it's a lot better in some respects to maybe learn the respect for it understand how it makes you feel and how it affects you and then when you get older it's absolutely yeah you, you know it's a little different over there you learn to uh handle your alcohol and then you get into a vehicle over here it's you know i don't know which is which is correct i'm not sure which is the right way but uh we'll debate that in another show, <laughs> that's right? what we're gonna yeah, let's get into politics back. and religion quick here <laughs> that tequila is already going to work right oh isn't it really oh my gosh um but really so you had been a dentist you really wanted to be outside you really wanted to get into the dirt a little bit more. And so one day you just decided to strike it up and buy yeah, a chunk of land and pretty much, you know, my wife and I got engaged. We, uh, we, we knew we wanted to kind of cut out on our own, be a little, have some separation from both our parents and our families and, uh, go in our own direction. We had very good friends. Fortunately, my wife's roommate in college is one of who is married into one of the oldest vineyard management companies, um, families in Napa, the Renterias. Oh, okay. So Denise Renteria, Oscar Renteria, Salvador Renteria, um, we were up visiting them almost every weekend. I had some friends from undergrad that had gone on to Davis to study enology and viticulture. I was kind of, you know, watching their lives, you know, and of course I did the thing all your counselors tell you, you know, doctor, lawyer, accountant. And, you know, then there were the rebels that actually went and did what, what they believed in. And, you know, I wanted to make my parents proud and be the first doctor in the family. You know, we had horse thieves, I think, up till me. And, um, you know, so I, I tried really hard to, to, you know, do that, which mm -hmm. I, I guess, you know, I guess once you're a doctor, you're, it's never really taken away. But uh, I'm, I'm really blessed to have had the chance to have had two careers. It's a good way to look at it. I could never be a doctor. So you're much smarter than me. Well, no. My last name's Quinn. Imagine if I became a doctor. Be the worst Medicine thing man. in the world. Yeah. I mean, just... Well, they could start the rerun. <laughs> You'd be a male. Then I'd be a male. Then, yeah, yeah. So would yeah, I have yeah. to be like a fourth yeah. generation <laughs> descendant of... Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I don't think it would work yeah, at all. Exactly. I don't think it would work exactly. at all. This is amazing wine, by the way. This Thank is you. really good, structured, full stag sleep cabernet. It shows all the trappings of, you know, when you look at stag sleep, when you look at tannin structures, when you look at acidity... I'm loving this. This is really lighting me up right now. Thank you. You got it. This is, uh, you know, I think what's what's unique about this wine, and I will actually go into some of these other wines, is stylistically what we do that is a little bit different than a lot of places. Um, you know, we're still small enough that we can pay attention to detail. Um, we can take chances. Right. Um, you know, I noticed several years ago, and I'll bring up some other great wines, you know, Bill Harlan and the Bond Project. Um, started doing these small barrel fermentations where they were having uh, more contact with the wood. Come on in. It's all right. Claw your way in. It's Hello. Good. Hello. <laughs> we're trying to reach through the table and grab our wines. There he is. There he is. <laughs> um, but, uh, you know, I, I loved it. I loved what I tasted from their projects. And I also noticed a lot of home winemakers were doing these extended macerations in small barrels. And it's so time consuming and it's so troubled. Um, but we're not 
So we decided we'd start messing around with this stuff. So probably seven or eight years ago, we started doing these extended maceration. When I say that, what that really means is when we pick the grapes and we stick the grapes and the seeds and the pulp and the skin and everything where it ferments and the colors extracted and the richness from the wine comes out of all, all of those products. Um, kind of badass winemaking up till, you know, several years ago was leading eating skins for maybe two or three weeks. And then it was like, my God, let's get it off the skins. It's getting so harsh and the seeds. But nobody ever took the time to think, what if I left it longer? What if I actually left it on the skins and crossed three weeks, four weeks, five weeks, six weeks? What you're, you're, you're just talking madness to me yeah, right now. Totally you're just crazy. insane. Well, it's the tequila. That's what's It is the tequila. But, um, and it was only... Yeah, only that. I know we need to double dip here soon. You might but, have uh, to. Um, anyway, so, uh, you know, there were some kind of pioneers that, mm -hmm. uh, that tried this stuff and I feel like I might've been one of those guys. And, and we noticed in doing these experimentations that you cross 45 to 50 day skin contact and, and things completely changed. And that's really what's happening with our wines is, um, wines are softer. They're, they're, they're still rich. They're plush. There's still tannins in there. So they have ageability, but but what's happened is these longer chain molecules are forming in the wines and it's both color and tannin molecules that are joining. And so you get this color great... and tannin really just more ways yes. to make my teeth purple. Well, see, this is exactly right. That's why I'm, I'm trying hard to keep it off your teeth. I figure a longer molecule might fall off easier, <laughs> but anyway, let's get If I remember more, again, in chemistry, the longer molecules actually stack better. They do. Well, that's what happens in a bottle. So ageability in a bottle, what's happening is things come together and uh, the wines join and these longer chain molecules do form with aging of a wine. And so things are happening a little quicker during the fermentation time. And it's, it's very, very cool. I mean, this is all, there's so many changes that have occurred in the last 10 to 15 years in winemaking. Um, I feel very blessed to, to be a part of it. It's really wow. cool. Wow. So. We're happy that you're part of it and making such wonderful wines and we've got two more wines and we really need to get on these wines because this half an hour is going to go by way too fast way too fast you got it well we're going to go into uh this other project that we make it's our second label uh oh and uh i see something about naughty yeah so uh, yeah this is uh this also had a little bit to do with the renterias um we uh we started another label that i wanted <laughs> I love how we just get music all of a sudden. We got naughty wine and then the music right on cue. Yeah. Check it out. Although I think for naughty we might have picked a different song, but maybe not. I'm just you know. <laughs> Who knows? We could have picked any song. Um, so naughty basically is uh, is our second label. Okay. And it was a side project I started with uh, Oscar Renteria a number of years ago. We've taken the brand over for Reynolds for ourselves now, but uh, it's an avenue for us to experiment with. Uh, with different grapes, different varietals, um, new winemaking techniques where we're not, you know, my job is very simple. My business plan, I should say, for Reynolds, don't mess it up before your kids can take it over. Okay. Keep it simple. It's winemaking it's in goal. itself, though. It's a goal. You, you know, you work really yeah. hard to grow great fruit. <laughs> Rule number one as a winemaker, don't fuck it up. Don't fuck it up. Oh, wait, can we don't. say that? Oh, hello. We've got people on screen. I love it. Hello. How's it going? Don? Is that Don? Oh, did we lose him? We had him. <laughs> lost him. Where'd he go? Come back, we got, we come, got, back, we got, come back. I'll knock on him. Come on, Matt. No. <laughs> anyway, anyway, so uh, the naughty thing is, uh, has been fun. It's, uh, it's something that we um, want to continue to make and uh, continue to come out with new playful wines. Um, there's so many, you know, for the first time, what is it? The What generation are we on now? Who are the 21-year-olds? What, what are we on? Z, X, I don't know. minus five or something. My girlfriend's little brother just turned 21. What yeah. would we consider him? X, Y, Z. Yeah. Have we run out? Have We've we, run out now. Are we? They don't have a Z? Could he be Z? I think it's Z. He's Z. We'll call him Z. Okay. E, Z. Okay. Easy. Yeah, so, they uh, have it easy. They don't but have you to know, really work. Wine is their number one choice of alcohol. Uh, for the first time, you know, it was, it was hard spirits and beer. And for the first time, about two years ago, wine became the number one choice of the 21 generation. And uh, well, that's with very cool. Brother, we opened up a three liter of, uh, one, of um, bubbles as old as he is. So I think we're definitely sh pushing him in that direction 
So do they have wine bongs yet with tubes and just? I'm pretty it? sure that they do, but actually that game was even yeah. back when I was in college. And instead of it being wine bongs, we actually were using bags of wine that we would take out of the box and you just spank it. And you just, you know, slap the bladder and you just go as long as you can. I mean, that's where it's come from. Hey, mom, just letting you know, um, I have no idea what he's talking about. I'm just letting you know I wasn't Nobody there. Nobody in this room has ever come played on that in, guys. game before come on in. in their life. Stop right in. We got more guests. It's really becoming a party. We got to make sure everybody has wine here. Um, I'm going to go pour some wine real quick, but I want to tell you, ask you and have you talk about why this is naughty and why it's inky. You got it. So naughty was uh, myself with a six pack of beer and a screaming two year old child um, locked in a room trying to come up with something clever. And uh, the inky um, is actually the two grapes that are in this wine are Syrah and Petit Syrah. Petit Syrah particularly is known for its dark color. And a lot of people say it's super inky. And so we thought, if you're going to start a brand called Naughty, why not come out with some cool names, right? Inky, racy, sticky. It could go on, right? It could go on. Kinky. So if we do a so Naughty Sticky, it's just going to be really sweet and syrupy. That's exactly right. And because the nickname for dessert wines in other countries, Australia. Australia. Stickies. Uh, so, stickies. Gotcha. So uh, we actually do make a sticky, and we make another wine called Racy. And so these are some of the other wines. So, you know, the whole portfolio for, let's just say, Reynolds would be, um, we make about, so let's see, we make a Chardonnay, a Sauvignon Blanc, a Merlot, an Estate Cabernet, a blend called Persistence, a Reserve Cab. Um, so that would pretty much conclude all of the Reynolds products, except every year we do make a unique wine for our wine club, which is always fun. And we, uh, hey, Craig. I feel like I'm on Star Wars or something. I, mean, I feel like, what were those characters from Sesame Street? No, 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 no. See there? Craig, are you there? All right, we're moving okay, on. We're moving on. And, uh, and so naughty, we just basically have uh, racy, inky. We have a standalone petit Syrah, which is really one of my favorites. And we also um, we also make the dessert one called. Petit. Don't make that every year. So, hey, Craig. Craig, are you still trying to cut in? <laughs> Guess not. Keep going. I'm not good at sign language, or I'd, I'd go yeah, for Yeah, I would go like this. I can do hi. That's about it. There we go. So that really kind of wraps up all the wines that we make at Reynolds. Um, we do have a new project that I think I mentioned before we got on the air. I think you did. Yeah, we have but a I new think We need more wine to talk about that. Should we, should we drink a little more? We should drink more wine. You know, I was thinking that. about... There's Actually, we have a super secret after show that's going to happen, so... At about 6.30 when the live streaming ends and we move on, I think it's going to be time to go on to we'll more glass. tequila. And I don't think about a little tequila. I'm thinking a lot of tequila. But you I know what? You're... I'm with you on that I'm one. Just a little light one. You know, just, you know. I'm not going anywhere tonight. You know, I'm old. And I'm here. It takes a lot of lubrication to keep the tongue moving. And by the way, they're light guys. Just, yeah, we're just, we're just like, doing little fun yeah, guys are, like yeah. that. But... Totally legal for those of you at home who are really watching us. Which I really only drink tequila. Breathe when I in drink and wine. breathe out, by the way. Inhale, exhale as soon as you. Oh my God. Not bad, huh? Not at all. Okay. Keep the rubber on the road. I like it. All right. So, um, so that kind of concludes all the we're wines. We're talking about naughty. We're talking about rubbers here. This could go south really fast. <laughs> Mom, once again, just letting you know, I have nothing to do with these conversations. He's worse than Conan and Bro Conan? Okay, now that's the tequila. No, oh, no, I gotta and give Conan. It so you're talking about the... Yeah. So I've got the red beer in the hair, so now we're just talking about Team Coco here. We're going to go down that road. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway. And your wife's here. <laughs> Girlfriend, wife. <laughs> Who knows? Yeah, okay. You keep going with tequila. It could you get even it. further than that. You might end up in Vegas before you know it. I'm up for that. We could get that road Vegas. one time. You might miss your surgery, but who cares? I know. I am having shoulder surgery tomorrow morning. So I'm going to make sure I'm properly medicated. And that's why you're there. pouring your wine out. I know. Well, I'm saving room for tequila later on. Okay, very cool. So we have one more wine that we're going to pour tonight. This is called, it's another project that, uh, it's kind of a great idea, actually. You know, 
again, I hate to keep going back to tequila and margaritas, but uh, one uh, one afternoon, you know, when you start having those religious political discussions with your best friends and no one's going to win. Well, we had one of those talking about growing grapes in Napa and uh, a bunch of winemakers were there. Brian, I'm not sure why you weren't there. You must have been in jail or something at that point. Yes. But uh, um, <laughs> anyway, uh, we were sitting around and everybody was trying really hard. The, the bearded guy. That's right. The milk, the guy in the milk container. Yeah, that oh. guy. <laughs> <laughs> we were all sitting around having one of those very deep discussions on who grows the best Cabernet in Napa Valley, right? And, of course, everybody has their, you know, Howl Mountain, Rutherford, Carnero, and the wall. Uh, I'm going to leave that one out. But, uh, <laughs> um, oh, my yeah, God. I, mean, I, I meant that with all respect. Right I meant that with all respect. <laughs> but, uh, um, you know, it was one of those moments of, you know, okay, you know, everyone's arguing over this. And, and um, a great friend of mine had this idea, just kind of burst it out. said, has anyone ever made a wine that has all of the parts of Napa in it? Has anyone ever made a wine that actually was the bouillabaisse base instead of just the shrimp or just the lobster actually had every piece of it in there. I know a few that start with 15 and then they maybe for, depending on the vintage, will take six of this or seven of that. But they, I don't think that they ever use all, all 15. I think they start with all 15. Well, we're up to 16 now. We are up to 16 now and we're going to hit 17 pretty soon, I think. I think you're right. But um, I know that there are a couple wineries that, give themselves that opportunity, but I don't think that they've ever actually gone the distance and had the persistence. They've always felt the resistance. If you're going to start rapping on me, just let me know here, because, you know. This is what's going to happen. We're just drinking a little tequila and we're having a really good time. But you actually have gone with all of them. So when, you're going to have to change the name, by the way. Well, the original line was actually called 13. Okay. And, you know, that was sort of the whole Think about it. What a cool name for a wine, right? The lucky, unlucky number 13. And um, that really started the whole thing. Now, of course, we weren't smart enough to think, well, they're going to change the number on you someday. You know, we're just like, 13, this is awesome. Let's get the 13 vineyards. So uh, unfortunately, my late friend, Mike Seitz, had this great idea. And uh, like all businesses, you know, on a napkin on a Saturday night, <laughs> You're like, how many have we done, right? All of us. They never come to fruition. No. Mike called me I have on a Monday. He goes, yeah, yeah, who does it, right? And uh, and Mike called me and said, you know, I, you know, I, I'm working with the stout vineyard with the duck horns. I'm working. I called this, 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 and uh, we're in. And uh, I'm like, really, we're going to do this thing. So we actually started this wine, and uh, that was back in 2002. Oh wow. And uh, so the wine has evolved. Unfortunately, Mike is this the tenth vintage killed. of it then? What I don't. What? We're so, nine. so not yet. Yeah. Two, so, so almost so there. We're getting there. Um, but Mike was killed in an accident the next year, Holy unfortunately. Dear. So we never got to see the bottled. He sees it every day. But uh, there's a little more behind this wine, a lot of energy behind this wine. So we think about Mike all the time. And it's just a cool project. It lives on. And uh, it's actually lived on to its next level. There's uh, the wine was the brand was just purchased by. A gentleman, uh, okay, there we go. Oh, I got it there. Fifteen. Fifteen. Um, so the brand, Appalachians, was just purchased by a gentleman from Texas. And uh, his name, I hope it's okay to say on, on the air, is Mike Martin. And uh, we're uh, going to take this to the next level. So it's, wow. got some, uh, um, it's got some cool energy behind it, and the energy will continue, starting with Mike and moving into Mike again. And... Uh, See what happens. I think this is great. And you've shared some wonderful wines with us. And we're not done. Sweet. We're just warming up. We're halfway through tonight's show. Um, we've gone through three wines. We actually have some other wines that we need to talk about. But this is actually where we're going to start wrapping up the, the gentle part. If you could even call this a gentle showing. But we're going to cut off our live feed. But we want everybody to really get in on our super secret show, which is when the tequila goes from here to here, when the wines go from here to here. And is that we, the backstage pass? This is the backstage pass. And the uh, only way okay. that you can actually get in on this show tonight is if you log in. Um, it's right there on our website. If you're already watching the live feed, this is really easy to get into. Just open up your uh, webcam and let's get you in on this. We want to get some... We do. Holy jeez. Tell them to turn their cameras off. 
Yeah, get these people, people who are watching us right now, get your cameras on. We Don't want be shy. We got our cameras on. <laughs> <laughs> so, no, we really do. Don't so, be shy. So, but thank you very much, Steve, for glad oh, you know, we got some up. we still got a few minutes, right? We got people we got a, in the we back got a here. A few minutes. Yeah, Real we got quick. Yeah, any questions? Right you guys got we... some stuff for us? Anything? Anybody? Yeah, I do have a question from the website here. Oh, website, real quick. Uh, Salty Al. Do you know Salty Al? No. Salty Al? Yeah. He says, uh, dude. Oh, wait, well, Salty Al. I, I, I know a couple Al's. I'm trying to figure which is Salty Al. Well, he says, like, <laughs> dude, you look good. Is that the one diet or are you just a uh, health nut? So what you do is you go to Disneyland and you there's a little cart, the corn dog cart. And you go as many times as you possibly can. And right next to it is the, uh, um, what do they call it? Cotton candy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. My, I like the purple color. I don't know what flavor it is, but. I'm blue. Eat that all the time. And you too can be slender and look like this. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a balance of corn dogs, cotton candy, wine, and of course tequila. Absolutely. Absolutely. I love it. It's a great, great <laughs> diet. And Salty Al, that is unbelievable. <laughs> thank you, Salty Al. And thank you, 55 Degrees, for sponsoring us tonight. Uh, we look forward to seeing everybody in the second half. Karen and Neil, we love you. Egg 55, just saying. Thank you for the nod. Thank you. And uh, we'll see you in a few minutes. And thank you, everybody, there. for being here. Let's, Come on. Uh, let's oh. have some fun. Do we have any more minutes? Show. Are we done? We're going to transfer over. We're done? For this half. All right. We're not done for tonight. Come on. Five, four, three, two, and we're live again. And I'm going to drink some more. All right, now you guys got to get involved because this is live now. We get to chat with everybody. Yeah, now it's really now going to make it a party. Go. Brian's in here. Okay, so do we have anybody logged in? We got to talk to somebody right now. Susan, we got somebody? Hello? Talk to me. I know we're having technical difficulties, guys, so uh, we can fake it. We're fine. They're, They're having, having technical, technical difficulties. difficulties. All right, so you started mentioning in the last show this this project that you're working on, this this fourth wine, this fourth grouping of wines, Right. this first growth crazy red wine that's steadfast. That's steadfast, where you import silver from Antarctica <laughs> on the backs of huskies, and then that silver gets turned into I love this. Love, to love. the labels that's then, like, fused onto the bottle. Is this how, like, cart comic strips get started? This I have no idea. This is awesome. This is probably how yeah, they get we started. We should start one. I we like the Steadfast comic strip. Which it's coming soon. Who? Steadfast. Steadfast. That's What's the name it? of the wine. Steadfa steadfast. So, so I'm going to give you the history on this. So, okay. So... You know, I wanted to create a wine that was a little bit of, not a little bit, was was way above everything I've ever done. You know, just completely outside the box. And, um, you know, uh, over the years, working with so many different vineyards, you know, making wines for several other people, you get exposed, plus the, obviously, the 16 Appalachians we're working with. Um, I'm, I'm very, again, you know, I'm so lucky to work with probably 22, 26 growers. Oh. And... I get to walk a lot of soil and I get to see some pretty crazy vineyards. And there's always a couple you go, Poof, you know, God, you know, hook brother up kind of a thing. <laughs> and uh, so, so I took so that. The, the walk happens in the vineyard, but then back behind the winery barn, there's this kind of little, hey, man. Hey, yeah, man, it's, exactly it. it's like flow on that commercial. Hey, 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 yeah. So, but when you back up, we can no longer see you. Exactly. Okay, cool. So, uh, you know, I, basically what I did is I finally just sort of, Dug my heels in. Unfortunately, it was you know 2011, and we we had a lot of rain. We had some issues with with uh, the weather, and I knew that probably wasn't the year to start a project like this. But I still started it anyway, in the sense of meeting with people, walking the vineyards, setting things up for 12. Okay. So the 2012 vintage is where we decided to start this project. And so what I did was I took eight vineyards that uh, kind of. You know, I had some deep relationship with. I, lo I loved everything I saw about them, the people I worked with, everything that was going on. Right on. And we brought this fruit in, and um, this was sort of like that pampered rock star. You know, do you want 
do you want the stems cut out of your strawberries? Do you want what do you want when you show up backstage, right? That's what this wine's all about. So everything so, you can So are they do. taking the clusters and pulling each berry off one by one and putting them on the sorting Pretty table? Pretty much, yeah. Oh, and playing whatever music you wanted in the background, why you picked them off. That's so kind the, of that. So the first ton had Bach, the second ton had Metallica, the third ton had Young Jeezy. I'm just, I'm, 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 that's, you know what, for digging, that was pretty good. That was pretty good. For being, a, for being on camera and on the spot, that was pretty sweet. But that's pretty much it. <laughs> God, you're like my sister Lisa. I've got another pig snorter in the background here. <laughs> uh, but that, that's, so that's really it. And uh, so we took... We took these eight rock star vineyards and we pampered them all the way through. Uh, we barrel fermented everything, left it on the skins for over 60 days on all, absolutely the best French oak I could possibly get my hands on. And uh, and then on, on top of it, the packaging. So it, it, blah, blah, smoked a cigarette every three hours, had sex three times a day. Blonde, brunette, redhead, alternating every time. Boom, absolutely. there you go. And uh, was brought up on a diet of, aside from the flaw, pastis, wine, and then... Absolutely. There you go. And then That's uh, a really good wood. And then we're going to dress it up now. So now we decided, okay, make great wine, people taste it, they make the decision. But what I did do was, I'm a little bit, I don't know if it's good or bad, but it's 12 bottles or nothing. And the reason I did that is because everything about it, the packaging the bottle, the case it comes in. So it comes in a box that is going to be a piece of furniture. It's going to be over really? the top. I wanted everything about this to just be over the top, right? And uh, I figured if I'm stuck with, you know, 150 cases, it's not so bad, right? Yeah. If nobody buys it, okay. But we've actually, actually had some, some good luck with it. And uh, so the bottle actually, so I've toted a flower for whatever, 16, 18 years, whatever it is. And uh, so I finally have my um, my sword and shield, my sort of Knights of the Round Table sort of thing, you know. And uh, what was the guy? Braveheart, that guy. What William was, Wallace. Yeah, William Wallace. So I finally, uh, we took our family crest, which is actually this right here in the back of the bottle. And, uh, and we uh, had our way with it. Um, we uh, had an artist kind of embellish it a little bit. And uh, we made this very, very cool um, label. And, and so the labels are all made out of pewter in Spain, and they're being hand-cast and hand-painted. Oh, so when I said that they were silver in Antarctica, I wasn't too far off. You weren't very far <laughs> off at all, so well done. And uh, so the, the packaging is going to be ridiculous. So the dripping red wax, because the original concept was going to be called Bloodline. Okay. And uh, Dave Finney, you stole me. You stole my trademark. I love you anyway, but uh, Finney, uh, Finney got Bloodline, and he's going to have he a very cool He did get Bloodline. Detail. I have not seen it. So we didn't yet. know we were fighting each other in the trademark office, but uh, that's okay. You know, Steadfast worked quite well. And, uh, I like Steadfast. It's a good land. It's a good land. So. And, it, and it's really, I think actually in that one, you brought up a really good point. In, in, in beginning it with 2011, and we all have talked about on the show how difficult 2010, 2011 were, and how great 12 and 13 and the fact that you came up with this in, in the year like 2011, but we're able to say, no, no, we're going to stick with it. We're going to keep on going. We have the beliefs. It was steadfast. You've been steadfast. So I think uh, yeah, it's a great word. You know, um, the uh, the little piece we sent out in the email to our wine club members today, you know, it was really about craftsmen back in the day. Right on. And, uh, you know, that's how I view this wine is sort of like what made you an incredible craftsman when you go to these festivals <coughs> and you see. Tony, are you here finally, Tony? Oh, Tony, forgot about it, Tony. Come on. How are you doing? Hey, Tony, we need to see your face. Which Come on. Tony? Yeah, which? We can hear you. We can hear you. Tony? <laughs> Hello? Hello? Tony? Tony? <laughs> There's Tony. He's smiling. Yeah. Yeah. Camera, Tony. Tony, run your hand through your hair. Let me make sure that's you. Ah, nice. Very cool. What is that thing? That's his. I could be a thumb. Yeah. Yeah. 
So he's walking. We're getting a walking uh, tour of Tony's house. Yeah. He's smiling and he's walking. When is he going to sit down and talk to us? Hi, Tony. You're scaring us now. Into the dungeon. We're not sure what's down there. It was him. <laughs> it puts the wine in the basket. God, I love my job. I love, Do you love your job. I love my I job. I love my job too. <laughs> oh, and there we go. Oh, hi. Uh, yeah. Can you hear us, Tony? We cannot hear you. We are really bad at lip reading. Not good at all. In fact, I can hardly see that. Far. Are we on mute? Have you put us on mute? Yeah, no. That was, that was a four-letter word. That was that a four-letter four word. word for yeah. sure. Yeah. Yeah. That was several four-letter words now. But you're looking good, Tony. So, Tony, what do you eat to look so good? Wait, do so are we? Is that Al? Yeah, Tony's run his hand through his head. All right. Do All right. We, we're moving on because other people won't know who the heck we're looking at. <laughs> we're just getting this whole, like... Yeah. <laughs> all right, you guys. Come on. you got to be on camera. you got to talk a little bit. It's really not all about us. <laughs> hey, Tony, what do you think of our crowd in the back? Not too bad, right? Yeah, give me a thumbs up. Give me a thumbs up. All right, there we go. There we go. Can't tell me he'll wait a wave. Oh wait, wait. Some okay. So who can hear us? <laughs> I want to know who is on the speaker right now. I want to talk to you. Donna. 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 Donna, can you hear us? Can you say? Hello? All right. Let's move on to Vino stuff or tequila stuff. We need more stuff. Vins. Um, come come on empty. up. Which one do you want? Brian Page. Come on in here, buddy. We love you. Yeah, please. Brian is another excellent winemaker. I notice how I included myself in that. Just doing what I can do here. Ah, I live with my brother. Um, so uh, Brian has some wonderful wines. If you ever get to Napa, you need to definitely stop by Revolver. Let's see this man. Or what's what's the name of the wine shop? Revolver. Page Wine Cellar. Page Wine Revolver Cellar. Revolver and Revolver. And this man helped me make it. So we've got it's a nice incestuous. little... incestuous. This is incestuous. To say the least. All happening right now. I'm going to go over here now. You go over. <laughs> Bye, Pookie. I said, sorry, we're one step from a, like a, a gay dead robot. And it'll be... <laughs> Well, the Where's Jeff? You know the surfboard's coming out pretty soon. The surfboard you guys got to have out. some questions. Come on. Yeah. Look, Come on. I have a what? All right. Yes. All right. What is the next appellation that's supposed to come out? What would you think? I th I'm kind of thinking it might be Pope Valley. Pope Valley. I have would to you agree, agree with me on that. Just got Coombsville. There are so many great vineyards up in Pope Valley. It is such a beautiful place to grow some fruit. I really think that's got to be the next one. I would agree. You know, I, uh, for those who don't understand what we're talking about, you know, Napa itself is obviously Napa County. And within Napa County, we have little, we'll call them zip codes. That's a great way to look at it, right? And um, within certain regions, um, it helps you to understand our valley, our little place on the face of the earth, a little better. Um, I always tell people when you're going to try to understand wines better on a wine cool. list, it's a little overwhelming when there are over 400 wines on a wine list. Oh if you gosh. can at least go Stag's Leap or Howl Mountain or Oakville, and you see four mm -hmm. wines, like every time I have a wine from this region, I like it. Um, it, it just helps you to narrow it down just a little bit better. What about Pritchard Hill? Love Pritchard Hill. Do you think Pritchard Hill it will come in before or after, or do you think that maybe they like the fact that they're not? I mean, you know, it's interesting. That's interesting because Pritchard Hill, as we all know, should probably fall, and it would be a small appellation, but it'd be a wonderful appellation. It would be sub appellation. It'd be a total comes. fantastic sub AVA. Um, good question. We like this. Any more? What do we got? Come on. Come on, you're gonna tell me we have this many people in the studio and nobody's gonna ask a question about wine? What creates an appellation? How do people vote on it? How does it get created? Very well. Would you like to take that one? Yeah, um, well, there we can kind of back, back and, forth and forth on this because an appellation, and I've actually got yelled at last week about calling things in Napa appellations because appellations tend to have a lot more rules about what you can grow and what you can't grow. And that in America, 
we don't have Appalachians. We have viticultural areas. Designated AVAs, right? AVAs. American there you go. Viticulture Association. And really what it's about, it's just really about the, the, the well, now it's time to throw a, terroir, uh, a, a French word out there, terroir. Um, but it's really just about the soil, the exposure to how the sun rises and sets, some light weather pattern differences, whether they get fog, whether they don't get fog, elevation changes, sure. well, really... small little nuances that during the growing season really separates, you know, one little Cabernet grape over here from one Cabernet grape over right. there. And it gives not only the, the consumer, as you've brought up, but, you know, people who are producing wines an opportunity to say, I want to make wines with these characteristics. So I'm going to search for vineyards within this AVA versus this AVA. Exactly right. So, you know, basically it takes about two years to go to the American Viticulture Association and you literally have to show up with sort of like a graduate thesis paper and you have to explain all of those characteristics you just talked about. And um, so, you know, basically you'd go and say from this creek up to this peak of this hill over to this major highway this little section we feel has these certain characteristics which differentiates us from this over here and all of our wines whether it be whites or reds have certain characteristics that we're proud of or for one reason or another that's really how the whole thing evolves now the original system was set up a number of years ago and uh, i'm not sure if we could redefine the lines it, it might be different nowadays but uh but, you know, we, we're doing the best we can, and uh, you got to start someplace. And uh, probably for wine's sake um, and for pure differentiation, it might have been different. The lines might have been drawn a little differently. But you know what? Well, you that's know, another reason to drink. As it's another reason to drink, and, it's, and that might be walking the line on do all AVAs get drawn exactly to those weather patterns and soils, or do some – wineries maybe have influence on where those lines get drawn because they want to be in this one versus in that one when they originally got broken up. Do you think that might also be? Yeah, I think there's a lot of politics like there always has been. Um, Some are soil driven, some are weather driven, um, some are a combination thereof. And uh, some of it had to do with, I just didn't want to pay the damn tax to be a (laughs) sub-appellation back in the day. And that's a whole nother story we won't go into, but uh, I bet they were wishing they paid the tax now. And just for a quick shout out, you, of course, have chosen Stag's Leap District as your home AVA. Well, you know what? We actually fall outside of the uh, Stag's Leap District for the winery. We are just in Napa, Appalachian. We do have a vineyard that we produce two wines from that are probably our most well-known wines from that small vineyard called Annapurna. And the rule of that for a wine, to put that on a wine, 90% of the fruit has to come from that sub-appellation right. to put that on a bottle. And, uh, you know, we're 75% has to be 75 or 80. What, for varietal? For just, no, for, it's 75 for varietal. Napa. For Napa, just to put Napa on the. For varietal. Okay, 75 for varietal. And what is it for Napa, 80? 80, 85. 80 or 85. I think it's, I think, okay, so it's 80. But then that's a change between varietal and total right, food content. 85. 85. 85. It is 85. Yes, but that's, that's even remember, better. We like that. The thing is you can be 75 cab to be cab um, happy, right. but you could be 75 cab and 10% cab franc as long as those – See, I knew this. <laughs> as long See, as I don't make wine for really from many other places, so I never worry about where the other grapes are from, so I don't really worry Actually, too much Brian about Actually, Brian and I were having a conversation earlier – most of our job as winemakers is not like stomping grapes. It's actually filling out all this BS yeah. paperwork going, oh, okay, crap. I brought in one extra ton from this vin- vineyard this year. Did I make sure that this person got that and that person got that? And The paperwork is crazy. It's actually beyond um, making drugs, drug companies. I mean, um, the third, third most regulated. Yeah, yeah. third most regulated. It's crazy. Um, the paperwork that's involved, and really the bottom line is, and I hope I'm, you know, I'm not going to get in trouble saying this, but this is the super secret yes, show. Okay. So whatever happens Good. stays yeah. within the show. You know, as you know, government won't tax on alcohol, and that's really the vein of our existence in a lot of ways, from the paperwork side that we hate. Mm-hmm. The beautiful side is taking something from the earth, you know, before Christ, and uh, putting in this glass and never getting it right. 
No, it's it's one of those things that <laughs> every year we have new demands. It's not a formula. It's something that we really need to spend time from, you know, first of the year all the way through September 1st, really monitoring how the vines develop. Then with that fruit that we've spent, you know, eight, nine months kind of tending to and babying, hoping that we don't screw it up over the course of the next 12 weeks, then we've got to throw that back in the barrel for another two years in some cases with our fingers crossed, and then eventually put it into a bottle and hope that oh somebody God. wants to sell. What have we got here? Quote? Wow. I love that. We see on the camera there's a bottle called The Quote. And I mentioned earlier that we make a wine club unique wine. And that was uh, one of the first barrel fermented projects. And I also see some tequila. I was going to say, I there. see, let's see, I see but, uh, De Sorono. I see plenty of bitters. I you see... got to turn the... <laughs> yeah. You got to turn the quote around because so basically what's neat about that is we bottled just a little bit of this, my first barrel fermented wines, and on the back of every bottle was a unique quote. So every time you opened the bottle, you had a fresh quote. Oh, many, there we go. How many K? Oh, wait. Wait. Oh, oh. oh shoot. <laughs> it's a quote. It's, it's a quote. A quote. <laughs> Let's say Samuel. I feel... Uh, I feel for the people that don't drink. I feel so. Yeah, I feel so. They're gonna feel all day. Yeah, it's totally. Yeah, Frank Sinatra. it's the best they're gonna feel all day. Frank Sinatra. There we go. See. So uh, again, another reason to be a member of the Reynolds Family Wine Club. There you right? go. We there make you, go. you feel better That's right. every day. Quoting Old Blue Eyes himself, Blue right? Eyes. So. Hey, thanks for that. That was awesome. Oh, really? And oh, I'm looking at that little holder over there. That could be I'm, a little bottle of reserve. I'm looking at all the different We don't things. know who we're dealing with here, but we love you. <laughs> oh, no, that's not. That's not a reserve. What is that? We're seeing the whole bar. <laughs> well, no, no. I'm a Ronin. I'm a Ronin. Oh, all right, all right, all right. That's awesome. <laughs> now we're getting into crazy territory. <laughs> and if you're going to get any crazier than that, we're going to bleep you. Yeah, we're going to bleep you. Stop it. <laughs> <laughs> this has been fun. You guys had a good time Have so far? Have you guys had a good time so far? We love this. Right. Well, I figure before we start getting too deep, you know, because we are kind of starting to get in that. Oh, look. Whoa! We've got a deer. We've got a deer with uh, deer with up antlers and a Santa Claus hat. Hello. Oh, oh, I don't want to see that. Oh, no, it's not. Oh, oh, that's enough. That's enough. I'm just okay. kidding. I'm just kidding. Okay. We're just kidding. Before we get any deeper, what were you going to say? No, I was just going to say this has been a wonderful show, and I, I really feel uh, Toot Sweet has been a great avenue to get small producers out there on the Internet and out to people, and I really hope for their success. And, you know, I hope this continues on. I hope people will spread the word to their friends, and uh, let's make this thing happen. I couldn't agree with you more, and I can't tell you how happy I am that I get to sit here and talk to you. Well, you can know? I come talk, when you like show your stuff? Can I come talk too? Can we do that? We, can we set that up so that you know we can, just can my we people call seats? your people? I don't have people. I don't have people. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you got you got my number. Call. Yeah, I got your number. <laughs> yeah. Um, and what we're gonna do is, and, and so you brought you brought tequila. Oh, we got to toast more. Yeah, you brought on. tequila. I'm gonna bring bourbon. So right. and um, we're, we're gonna work with that. And Brian has to come. So Brian, if you <laughs> so when we have this conversation, you will be in attendance, Thank you. and you will be <laughs> drinking bourbon with us amongst all the other wines that we will, of course, be partaking in. Thank you. Sir. Sounds good. Absolutely. Sounds good. So uh, I, I'd like to just raise a glass to all you guys, all y'all. That was my southern. Country. All y'all. Um, I'm from Virginia. So, uh, so I love it. Thank you guys for coming out to share the evening with us tonight. And uh, I know we're kind of kicked back now at this point of the game, but. Thank you guys very much, and have very happy holidays, and let's wrap the show. Let's wrap the show, and thank you, everybody, for trying to participate. We've actually had a whole lot of fun with our super secret secondary show tonight. Um, we wish we could have gotten a little bit more conversation, but we were trying. It was fun. We drank plenty of great wines. Thank you so much, Steve. Reynolds family, please go out and find them. Thank you again to 55 Degrees for supporting us. You guys do such a great job. Thank you to Toot Sweet. It's because of you guys that we even get to communicate, have these parties, share these wines, 
And, you know, we'll see you guys soon. Thanks so much. Cheers, everybody. Happy holidays. Okay. Let the real drinking begin. <laughs>